Let's start this look at the new part features by applying a fillet. So I'm going to apply a simple fillet to this edge and I'm going to accept it. And now I've changed my mind so I'm going to edit the feature and notice at the very top here I can actually flip this to a chamfer. Size is going to stay the same. I'm going to click the check mark and now we have a chamfer. Only catch is notice that it's still labeled as a fillet in the browser or sorry in the tree. Um, but you now have the ability to flip back and forth just like that. Easy. You don't have to delete. You can just remove it. They've also gone in there and they've actually enhanced the chamfer feature to pull across some of the fillet features. So notice that I'm able to do a offset face and notice the new option for multiple distances. So across one collection loop of edges you can actually vary the, the um, size on that chamfer. What I'm going to use here is I'm going to use the face to face option and I'm going to say okay I want you to calculate a chamfer between that face and that face and you can see the sets that have been used and I'll click the check mark and we can see that that feature has been applied. So took two long standing features of the fillet command and they applied it to the chamfer feature. Okay well I'm going to add in this whole feature and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the circular pattern. And I'm going to say, well, I'd really like to pattern that feature. And I'd really like to pattern that along this direction. And what's new here is the ability to set the direction. So notice that direction one is going instant spacing in this case. I'm actually going to bump up the spacing to 30 degrees and I actually want four of them. So we can see how it's going to update that. Well in direction two what I'd like to have is I would like it to go in um, you know maybe we just want 20 degrees and I wanted two of them. So I can actually set in that case. So I set the two directions. I'll click the check mark and we can see that the feature has been created. So you can do this asymmetrical where it goes the same amount both both directions or goes differently in, in either direction. So let's switch over here and let's look at probably the most powerful new part modeling feature which is the new advanced hole wizard. What's great about this is how easily you can build up kind of a compound hole where you've got various elements to it and then you can actually save that to your favorites. So let's start by picking the near side and what I want to start with as you can see here is I'm going to start with a near side counter bore and I'm going to add in another component and I'm going to add in a straight tap. So you can see how easy it is just to kind of build up the components. So now I've got the, the near side started and it doesn't have to be done but I'm going to go and pick the far side and you can see that it's defaulting the far side to a tap which is maybe fine but what I'd like to do is I'd like to add on top of that you know, a hole and I'd like to add on top of that maybe I'd like to add on a countersunk. Whoops, picked the wrong direction. Let's actually pick the far side countersunk or maybe we want a far side counter bore. So you can see how I can build these components up. Now to set the various sizes you simply just pick on the component. So maybe what I'd like to have is I'd like to have a number six on this end as you can see and it's going to be for a binding head screw Actually, I mean, that's a little bit big. Let's go with a number four. So I picked my number four, as you can see. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick onto the tapped information. And I can say, well, let's actually place in um, a number four tapping size in there, right? So we're maybe a number six. So you can see how we're able to go in there and pick the various sizes to, to match. So let's pick that number four. And you can see now that it's blind one times the diameter. Maybe we want two times the diameter. What information that is that we want. So let's actually put a user defined and let's put two units in there as maybe what we want. And two units is obviously way too big. So let's go, let's just set this back to two times the diameter. Okay, so with this side set, now what I'm able to do is I'm able to drop down here and make sure that this matches. So or maybe it doesn't have to match but let's just make it match in this case so we'll do a number four and again we will use the option to go up to the next element which in turn will be the tap on the other side. We'll take this feature here let's change the size
And by picking that, I might realize, okay, this feature no longer works. Well, just because of that, option might happen. So you can actually delete elements as well. So it's just as easy to go in there and pick and add as it is to um, you know, change the various elements. Finally, we'll do the counterboard here. We'll flip over to our position. Let's locate that, and before I actually create it, let's actually save this. So we'll add to the favorites, we'll call this an M2. Click OK, and we'll apply that feature. Now, the great thing about this is how easy it is to reuse. So from the Features tab, I'm going to drop in the Advanced Hole again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the near side. And I'm going to simply load in the M2 configuration. We'll pick the far side so it knows where to go. We'll pick our position. And we'll click the check mark to apply it. So you can see how easy it was for me to build up this compound hole by adding and removing features, setting their various sizes, going up to a particular element, which is great because it takes out some of that guesswork. Well, I got holes coming from both sides. How do I know what their, their depth and their distances are? Um, and then you can save them to reuse them. So a great new powerful enhancement within SolidWorks 2017.